Hey everyone, it's Phil again, and welcome to Nightwing issue 5. Right. <laughs> Today we're going to talk Gotham Knights, and if you've been listening to Before the Bat, then you recognize my uh, guest today, uh, Kristen Gaiman, who put together the uh, Dick Grayson book, uh, 75 years of Dick Grayson. Uh, welcome. How are you doing, Kristen? I'm doing really well. I'm really excited to talk about Gotham Knights. I think it's my favorite you know, book series or whatever you would call it. <laughs> yeah, it is really good. That's like when I was talking to Devin Grace and I, I really like those early issues. She I know. Did of it. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, I think that's the thing that I know, at least among some Dick Grayson fans, Devin's work is kind of con, kind of controversial. I'm not, um, but I think it's mostly because people who have only read Nightwing, because I think, um, I read some kind of nasty stuff that people on like Tumblr, surprise, um, have said about Devin, and I think that they're just basing it on things that they don't like about Nightwing, and I feel like they must not have ever read Gotham Knights, because Gotham Knights is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, Gotham Knights is good. Her work uh, with uh, Nightwing and Titans was good, but I just remember at the time when she started on Nightwing, there was like, yeah, yeah. Was... I just, I just love how Gotham Knights actually, at least in the first part when Devin was still writing it, because I think she didn't write the whole thing, right? I think she moved on. I think actually she might have had to drop Gotham Knights when she was moved to Nightwing or something. Um, but when she was writing it, you know, the Bat Family felt like a real family. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, that that that's that's what I, I love the whole Bat Family from like the er, like the late nineties and the early two thousands. Like that's what I said. Like I loved how Dick Grayson and Tim Drake had like a older brother, younger brother relationship, and you just lost all that with the New Fifty Two. I know. Yeah, that's one of the one of the absolute saddest things I think about the New Fifty Two. I think that Dick has um, with the Grayson with the Grayson book and getting, you know, some kind of starring roles in um, Robin War and Batman and Robin Eternal. You know, his his star is really rising, and I think that, you know, Grayson is a good book and gives him really time to shine, and I don't think Tim Drake has fared nearly as well in the, uh, in the, in the new 52, and it's particularly sad that he and Dick don't really seem to have much connection anymore. It's so sad. Yeah, and I just wish they would give Tim Drake, like, his back his own series. Like I loved the the well, I loved his Robin series, but the Red Robin series I thought was great. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if you heard, but they're talking now. I guess DC's doing some big thing called Rebirth in uh, June, and they haven't. Oh, looked... are you talking about Rebirth? Yeah, yeah, they. Yeah, haven't... I, I, yeah, I got an email about it from my from my comic book store that I don't know, just sort of letting us know that it's happening in I don't know April, August sometime yeah um, but i have tried not to read too much about it because i'm really not sure how it i'm really not sure how it feels well they haven't even let out a lot of details yet but i know they said they're canceling a lot of books once it hits including uh, they said they're grayson they're canceling grayson quote unquote but now wait have they said they're going to cancel grayson or is that just a rumor they put out a i think it's accurate i think because they put out a whole bunch of books they said they're going to cancel and grayson was on the list but since they haven't like let any details out, people are speculating that okay, maybe that means they're gonna uh, give yeah. us a new, a new, a new Nightwing too, number one. I think it maybe. would be too bad. I mean, I kind of wonder what they'll do with Dick, but I think what is more worrying if they cancel Grayson. I mean, like they'll give Dick something, obviously, but what's gonna happen to all the other characters in Grayson? What's gonna happen to Helena? Because she's pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, people think maybe they're doing that be- just because we're gonna get a new Nightwing series, maybe. Oh, oh, I see. Is that kind of to tie in with Robin War? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Just, I don't know, maybe, well, the people are like, is this another reboot? Are they going to, like, you know, do a different continuity again, or what's yeah. it going to be? So, but yeah, people are just thinking it's it's a new, going to be, they're going to put him back as Nightwing somehow. Kind of something else. <laughs> uh, but, uh. Yeah, but yeah, we were talking Gotham Knights. Uh, I think, like I told Devin, um, I think my favorite story arc from her time on Gotham Knights was uh, what is it, issues eight through eleven? I think that whole the whole Hugo Strange storyline. Yes, yeah, and I just I just reread it this morning, so it's totally in my head. Uh, so now is that 
Did you say that was your favorite storyline or Devin's favorite storyline or both? Um, it's one of my favorite Nightwing stories, and it's I think it's definitely my favorite from Gotham, the Gotham Knights run. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think it's yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites too. Uh, probably that one, of course, and the adoption storyline, duh, <laughs> are, my, are my favorites, of course. <laughs> yeah, but that whole Hugo Strange storyline, like I see that as like a prequel or like giving us a sneak peek at things to come, you know, once Battle for the Cow and everything hit. It's yeah, like, it's really good about sort of. Thinking about, um, you know, who who Batman is uh, and that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, yeah. I, some of the stuff he says, is Bruce Wayne Batman or does Batman masquerade as Bruce Wayne? <laughs> and I would like to go with the sort of uh, idea that there are three, that there are three Bruce Waynes. That there's Batman Bruce Wayne, there's Brucey fake Bruce Wayne, and then there's real Bruce Wayne. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I just love that whole thing. Well, it's, it's, I think a, a lot of it is about Dick's relationship with him too. And it's like, you know, f- you know, during Prodigal, he was like, okay, Bruce will be back eventually. I'm just filling in as Batman. But at th- this was like the first time I think he was actually faced with, okay, when Bruce dies, maybe he's dead now, but when Bruce dies, you know, the whole operation yeah. is everyone's going to come looking at, you know, to me to lead everyone. Yeah, he is kind of placed in that. Uh, position of leadership. Well, plus I think it just um, shows, so you know how close his connection is with Bruce, and really helps show that great brotherly connection with him. You know, when Dick thinks Bruce died, and then Tim takes him back to the manor, and Tim's freaked out, and he runs to get Alfred, and he's kind of like, "Alfred, Dick's broken. He thinks Bruce is dead. Help me fix him." <laughs> <laughs> I know, and that's pretty great. Oh, uh, that yeah, that whole thing is great. I mean, even just it's. Even at the end, it's classic Bruce. He has, a, you know, a, a you know a backup yeah, plan yeah. that he told no one about, and I don't know. I think we kind of missed that. Yeah, when you were saying, yeah, that's right. And, at the, and you mentioned at the end how when Dick breaks, um, when he says the oath, uh, and that's Bruce's, oh, what is it, trigger or whatever to uh, undo the hip, undo the hypnosis. Um, I think it's just a cool, a cool expression of sort of where a way that Tim and Dick differ, but also maybe a shows at their at that point in time how their relationships with Bruce are different because I love how Bruce explains it. And Tim's like, you hypnotized yourself? That's awesome. Uh, and Dick and Dick adds, not to mention manipulative and unfair. Um, and I just thought that that was nice because Tim's sort of thinking, that's so cool that you can sort of manipulate yourself like a computer or whatever. And Dick is, you know, maybe acknowledging that it's cool, but also, you know, it really would have been kind of nice if we'd known about this. Uh, and I think it's nice that it sort of shows how Dick, more than some of the other bats, prioritizes or, you know, at least tries to, you know, feelings and making sure, you know, try to be, you know, nice to other people. But also maybe that, you know, at that time he does kind of have a deeper connection with Bruce because, you know, Tim's still living with his dad and going to the boarding school. And that maybe it feels more insulting to Dick that Bruce would do that without telling him. Yeah, I just, yeah, Dick and Tim. Both what do you have, think? <laughs> Dick and Tim have like really different um relationships with bruce i don't know if you ever read the bruce wayne murderer storyline but uh they were like oh tra- definitely i did yes well do you, i do you just remember when like they're out on the street like, they're, tra- they're trying to clear bruce wayne's name and uh you know dick's like you know he couldn't have done this it's impossible and tim's like well you know i don't i want to keep an open mind you know i'm i'm pretty sure he didn't do it but you know there's always that possibility and Dick never, yeah. Dick, Dick never has his doubts about Bruce mostly, and then Tim, you know, Tim is always the one with the open mind. Yeah, and I like that. How yeah, you you really see Dick's loyalty, uh, but then you also see how Tim is very much following the evidence. But I also think it's important that Bruce Wayne murder takes place so closely after uh, Bruce adopts Dick, and you know. When Bruce is all, or I mean, when Batman is all, I'm just going to get rid of Bruce Wayne, you know, really way more upset than anybody else because he has more of a connection with Bruce than a lot of the other, the other bats, that sort of father-son connection. And a part of me, in my mind anyway, I like to kind of mirror it with what happens when Bruce dies, but, you know, of course, doesn't really die, um, you know, with Darkseid and that sort of thing, how... Mm-hmm. Um, at that point, 
Dick is following the evidence, and the evidence is like, yeah, he's probably dead. I mean, they have a body. Turns out it's the wrong body, but, you know, they've got a body. Um, And he's like, I think he's dead. And Tim is the one not following the evidence. Like, no, he's not. He's not dead. And I think that that's kind of interesting how they're reversed, but also an expression of how Tim was much more recently adopted and not quite as recently as the dick with the Bruce Wayne murder, but that maybe it's sort of, this is Tim's time when he really needs sort of like his dad to, you know, not be dead, to not be a murderer, you know, whatever, that he is in that place where he's not ready to give up um, on, on Bruce Wayne. I just like to see, I think it's kind of an interesting, in my mind, I make it an interesting parallel anyway with Bruce Wayne murderer. Oh, yeah. And then and the whole thing with him adopting uh, Dick and Tim, I just think it's, part of it's like, okay, well, he adopted Jason, so if he's going to adopt Jason, he better adopt those other two. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know, J- Jason is like my least favorite <laughs> Robin. But, um, because, the you know, Dick Dick is my favorite Robin, and then Tim is my second mm-hmm. favorite. Cause I, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I next is Tim because I I just identify with Tim because well, like when he first showed up, I think Tim Drake and I mm-hmm. were about the same age, twelve or thirteen when he first showed up. So, um, now did you get did you get because you said um Dick was your is your favorite Robin? Did you get into um Batman and Robin through the comics or did you get in through one of the through one of the shows? Because for me, it was Batman the animated series, and so I think that's part of the reason that Dick is. Uh no, I got th- originally I got through with the co- uh with the comics and then uh the anime a few years I probably got in hardcore around eighty eight so I was probably like three or four years before the animated series. Oh, I think that I think that they, which I really love the animated series, although not as much when Dick's Night we don't like the animation with that as much. Um, but I think that that's a big influence for me helping to I mean Dick's awesome, but also helping to promote Dick. No, as my favorite Robin because I saw him first as Robin and I was kind of stunned to realize that there had been more than one Robin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I remember when I first uh, picked up a comic, it was a Jason. Jason Todd was Robin, and uh, yeah, I was like, wait a minute, why is he calling him Jason? Because you know, I'd I'd seen reruns of the '66 yeah, Batman reruns. and what? <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, my dad, my dad at the time, because like Tim having his Robin comic overlapped with. Um, the animated series so you know i really like robin so my dad said hey there's a different robin and he gave me uh one of the, the robin comic book and i read it and i just wasn't wasn't into it and it's funny now because now it was i think it was around the time of nightfall so bruce wasn't really in the comic and right. i was so annoyed i was like oh my god how do we have this robin comic without batman i mean i didn't say that because i was like eight or whatever um but i just think it's funny because i was upset when i was a little kid that i was having robin without batman and now that i'm grown up i love it when i have robin without batman <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's all yeah that's that whole time when bane broke bruce wayne's back or you know having yeah. all the robins together like we've had in batman and robin eternal or in robin war that's fun <laughs> yeah so uh are you are you current on uh batman and robin eternal uh, I think I'm a couple of weeks, but I think I'm a couple of weeks behind because I haven't been to the store. But um, you can let me know what's up. It's, uh, but I mean, you you like what you've seen? Well, we've talked before, but you but uh, you like what you've seen up to up to yes, now? Yes, yeah. Um, I like I like it. Um, a part of me wish uh, I was talking about it with the, with someone else. A part of me wishes that there would be no perfect Robin. That it would be um. It'll be like a fake out. Like, there's no such thing as perfect. So there's no perfect Robin. Uh, but then uh, one of my other friends said she thinks it's not supposed to be that there was really anyone who was actually trained to be the perfect Robin, just that somebody had their life ruined for it. And I was like, oh, that's that's okay. kind of yeah. They kind of re- <laughs> yeah. They kind of revealed it this week who 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 was supposed to be the perfect Robin but got their life ruined. Oh, is it? You want to know who it is? Is it Harper? Yeah. Yeah, see, that's what everyone was saying. They're like, it's going to be Harper. So wait, so the deal is that Harper's parents were killed by mother? Uh, well, basic. well, when she first showed up, to, her father... Is that what happened? Yeah, her, well, her mother was killed and her father kind of ran away all cowardly, so... Oh, okay. But she wasn't ever actually trained by mother, right? No, yeah, that's the thing, I guess. Yeah, she just had her life ruined and the whole plan didn't go through, so... 
Okay, so she was supposed to be the perfect Robin, but she's not the perfect Robin because she wasn't ever trained to be the perfect Robin. I guess <laughs> they haven't filled in that all the going. They haven't filled all the details in yet, but yeah, that's kind of the way it's going. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people were being like, uh, Harper. Does. I still think a lot of people don't, are not really that into her. I don't really know very much about her because she's mostly been in the main Batman comics, I think, right? Yeah, and they, she, she's she's a product of New 52. She wasn't even around before, you know. Yeah, and I haven't really read um, too much with her. I just figured it would be good that none of the Robin Robins were this perfect Robin just because I think it would start a bunch of wars among the fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be like, my favorite Robin is the perfect Robin. <laughs> yeah, I just have a feeling, yeah, they picked Harper because she, like I said, she's only been around probably like three or four years, so she didn't have that much backstory to mess with. Yeah, and she's kind of a, and she's kind of a safe choice. I mean, I would say that if they were going to pick someone, it makes sense because, you know, if you pick, if you pick Dick, you know, any of the non, you know, people who are more fans of, you know, they'll be mad, vice versa. Um, you know, if you don't pick Dick, all the Dick fans will be annoyed. Um, and same thing with, Stephanie, Stephanie and Cassandra. I mean, I think you could have picked either one of them, and it would have been it would have been okay. But yeah, since they already had backstories and stuff, I guess it makes sense. I don't know if I think it'll make people like Harper anymore, though. Yeah, but once again, with rebirth, who knows if she's even going to be around in six months? It's <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's this is true. Yeah, that's that's people's whole problem with DC is like they you know you get attached to a character and then they could wipe out their whole backstory in a couple of years, you know. Yeah, that is that is so true. <laughs> but um, have you did you oh. see the did you see the new uh, animated Batman movie that's out now? Uh, Batman Bad Blood. Oh yeah, yeah. I just so you did you did see it? You said. So here's one thing that I wonder about is since it's this is more of a general question. It's animated, and I always think you know like Disney and that kind of thing that animation is geared towards kids but i'm not a parent but i don't think i would ever show this movie to my kid well i shouldn't say ever show this movie to my kid but like a five-year-old i don't think i would show him this movie <laughs> yeah no uh yeah a lot of the a lot of the movies dc's putting out these days are pg-13 so i know yeah which kind of blo- which i mean i think it maybe it's just because i think of animation as being for children but it kind of blows my mind that an animated movie has such a, I mean, not that PG-13 is that high, but I mean, kind of a high rating. <laughs> yeah, but in, uh, later on this year, I don't know when, they're, they're, uh, did you hear they're doing the animated, uh, killing, uh, Batman the Killing Joke? Oh, I'm sorry, it's gonna be, uh, which, it's gonna be what, later in the year? Uh, the, they're doing an, uh, an animated version of the Killing Joke. Oh, no, I, oh, wait, no, I think I did know that. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna watch that one, though. Yeah, I don't know because that I'm, that's either going to be P, that's going to be PG thirteen or maybe even R because I mean yeah that's kind of, that one's like kind of a little too intense for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so out of the three, so what is it? Bat, Son of Batman, Batman versus Robin, and then Bad Blood. Definitely, I like Bad Blood the best. How about you? Oh yeah, because there's there's a ton of Nightwing. <laughs> well, yes, also, but I don't know. I thought it just kind of. I don't know. I thought it just kind of worked the best. There weren't really, th- in all of the other things, there were little bits that kind of annoyed me, and there weren't really as many things that annoyed me in this one. Yeah, I, I, I got that too. Yeah, I thought the story was a lot better. And mm-hmm. the only thing I and really it was, And it was nice that, I don't know, people weren't so, into, and maybe this is just, you know, my bias, but it was nice that people weren't so antagonistic. I thought it was a nice touch that uh, Dick pretty much welcome Batwing and uh and Batwoman into the fold and you know they all went off and did it together well yeah that's just you know that's the main selling point of uh Nightwing or Dick Grayson because he were he works so much he works so well with everyone you know he could basically physically could do anything Batman can do and (laughs) he's not such a jerk about it exactly and I was a little bit um and you know some fans on Tumblr we've been a little bit nervous that you Mm. know you know, would they make Dick not, not look very good and stuff like that? And I thought that this did a pretty good, I, you know, they did a good job. He looked, you know, competent. They actually didn't deal that much with him as Batman. I feel like that was only half the movie. But, you know, he was a nice guy. He was competent. I like that him and Damien were, at, you know, at each other's at each other's throats as much. It just, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, uh, I've been 
beating the drum, especially after this movie. I want to either a solo Nightwing animated movie or we need like a live action uh, Nightwing TV show. Oh, really? <laughs> that's oh, wait, what I want. Be animated or no? That's the. I, this is just what I want. But <laughs> oh yes, yeah, definitely, yeah. That'd be awesome. I because... think that they could do a good job. All did um. If if they did it the right way, if they did a Grayson, if they did the like spy kind of show too, um, and definitely if they wanted to do that live action, I feel like that might be easier to pull off. If it was like Dick, former hero who sometimes hooks up with spies and does spy things, and sometimes hooks up with other heroes to do hero things, that could be cool too. Yeah, I mean, you could do both. I mean, you could do a Nightwing show, and then for like a season or something, he for some reason he has to drop the Nightwing identity and be this the spy oh, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'd be that's true. Yeah, he has to go undercover as a spy. <laughs> yeah, and it's just that you know they cut they kind of don't want to put Batman on TV. So I mean, it's the next best thing. The Dick Grayson mm-hmm. character is so great, and it's not like you. I mean, he doesn't have superpowers, so you don't have to do like these massive special effects. Yeah, and I think if you did it, I mean, not quite. Although I love the '66 show, but maybe not. You know, not quite that campy. But you could all. It could also be cool because you'd have Dick, and then you could bring in cool guest stars to be like, you know, oh hey, this random famous person is going to be Clark Kent for a show or something. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because that was kind of a cool thing about the six. At least I get the sense from the '66 show that you know famous people. Uh, came on to play, you know, had cameos as, you know, villain of the week, uh, kind of, kind of thing, and that could be, that could be fun. Oh yeah, and and he's not Batman, so I mean, you he, he could also he all he could always be throwing jokes out and, you know, being, you know, yeah. Uh, or you could have, or you could have Batman be like on the phone. No, <laughs> uh-huh. you wouldn't have you wouldn't have to ever show Batman. You'd just be like call him up on the phone or something. Or maybe oh, not. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, have you seen the new Supergirl show? She she like uh, messages with uh, Clark Kent sometimes on uh, the computer sometimes when she's at work. Oh, in Supergirl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, or they could be like texting him. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and you could bring in, like you said, you bring in whoever, whatever guest stars. I mean, you have Batgirl, you could have Oracle, you could have Huntress. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, anyone. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, what? I was going to say, did we want to go back? I think we, we kind of got off it, but did you want to talk anymore about Gotham Knights? Well, yeah, that's what, was, that's what I was going to ask you before we were done. Uh, like, what was, like, your favorite issue or moment or whatever from Gotham Knights? So, I would probably, because I'm emotional staff, um, definitely I think that in 17, the one where, uh, with, that's where Bruce first um, does the does the adoption stuff and he's given the whole speech because uh, it's right after they just defeat this guy who like, eats souls and sucks up people's power so he can live forever and he wants to take Batman's power you know so that he can protect Gotham forever and Dick says you know isn't that what isn't that what you want and Batman launches into this whole speech about how no the only you know true meaning of forever is fathers passing their you know talents down to their sons. I would say is when they can be parents to children, but you know, it's gotta be a father son moment for Dick and Bruce since both guys. Uh, and then he's like, and I drew this up and you know, it's trying to be all, all cool. And it's like, it's cool if you don't want to, but you know, Bruce is like, please love me. Um, mm-hmm. And Dick's like, I get it. I love you too. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> oh yeah. And like I always said, I, I think Bruce also wanted to adopt them. So, you know, in the event of his, you know, in the event of his death, Dick and Tim would, you know, would get all his, you know, material possessions and. Yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. And um, and you know, knowing that and rereading um, A through A through eleven today, I think there were some hints, and then I also read fourteen, which is the one with the letter. Um, you know, there's definitely some hints that I mean, because I assume Devin must have sort of had this plan. I'm not quite sure how many. You know how far ahead they have they have to plan, but mm-hmm. I mean that happened in issue seventeen, so probably it was in probably uh, you know pretty pretty early on that you know they're kind of dropping hints when at the end of number of number eleven Bruce says you know you didn't really it was interesting to watch you dig you didn't really have a you don't really have a relationship with Bruce Wayne which I think is interesting I think depending on what era of comics you read 
like Golden Age and stuff like that. He definitely has a relationship with Bruce Wayne. But, you know, in some of the more modern times, I think people have really, a lot of writers have really pushed, you know, Bruce Wayne is Batman, or Batman is Bruce Wayne, and Bruce Wayne is the fake, uh, or whatever. And, you know, Bruce saying you don't really have a relationship with that guy, but neither do I, uh, you know, kind of, you know, planting that little seed that mm, you know, we should do something about this Dick and Bruce relationship. Uh, yeah, I found that interesting. It's like, you know, he was like, oh, Dick, you never had a you really didn't know how to relate to Bruce Wayne. You really don't have a relationship with him. I, you know, it's like, well, does Bruce, what kind of relationship does Bruce have with Bruce? I don't think he's in touch with himself. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and that, that line is something that I don't know. I, I partially like it and think it's very interesting. And then a part of me sometimes gets, gets mad. I don't think gets mad about it, but I guess it just depends on how you want to interpret Batman. And, you know, and I think somewhat, we know, which stuff, you want to make it your personal canon. Cause I don't think that, um, I mean, I think it's, Bru- you know, back when Dick's parents first died, I mean, I think it's definitely Bruce Wayne that sees, Oh, this is horrible, you know, and wants to take, and wants to take Dick in. That's not Batman being all like, this child is very skilled. He will make an excellent sidekick. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's not like as far all star Batman and Robin. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, I think early on, definitely, you know, I think there was a pretty strong Bruce and Dick relationship, and maybe you could kind of consider that, you know. So that's sort of the golden age of comics, and then, you know, as Dick as Dick gets older, I think Bruce is one of those people that has trouble. He can deal with younger kids pretty well, and then he gets to have trouble with the teenagers uh, that, you know, then their relationship breaks down a little bit and does turn into mostly a Batman-Nightwing relationship, and it's nice that, you know, he tries to go back and, and fix it. Yeah, I just... I just think the whole thing with their relationship was, is that, uh, yeah, Dick relates to him more as Batman just because Bruce is all about the mission. I mean, Bruce really doesn't have any drive really as Bruce Wayne. So as loyal as Dick is, you know, he, he always wants to help people and be there for them. And for Bruce, everything's the mm-hmm. mission. So that's what, of course, that's why he would relate them that way. Yeah. Yeah. Def- yeah. Definitely. But, um, um it, uh, it just hit me while we were talking, uh, at the end of one of those Gotham Knights issues, uh, like Dick's thinking to himself something like, yeah, Bruce, if you could ma- wave a magic wand, you would bring your parents back in an instant or something. But for me, he's like, I miss my parents. I love my parents. I miss them. But, you know, I wouldn't change anything in my life that's happened up to this point. Yeah, yeah. In the le- in the letter one, I really, I really like that. I think that's really, I think that's really cool uh that he because i do think i do think that's true i'm mean, a part of me wonders if um i like to think that by the time we get to bruce you know having raised dick and then having had jason and kim and then Dan, you know as we get on that bruce also wouldn't go wouldn't go back for it but you know that is a big thing that they really play up in the comics that you know a lot of times when uh, well in in other media you know when bruce goes into his dream world it's always his parents are his parents are still alive um but yeah i think it's really true that dick wouldn't go back and i think it's great and really shows sort of how maybe how his motivations are are different that you know he does it because it's it's the right thing it's the right thing to do uh there's one Let's see. It says, oh, yes, he does it from gratitude, devotion, and hope. That's in Gotham Knights number 10. Uh, and I think that, and I think that's true. And I think that's why he wouldn't go, he wouldn't go back because, you know, he really does, he really does love Bruce and appreciate so much what Bruce did for him. And he really loves his life as, you know, a vigilante as helping, as helping people out. And I think it's a good sign of how Dick is someone who can move forward more easily than, say, Bruce. Yeah, that's what I think the advantage of uh, Dick as Nightwing or even his time as Batman. His advantage over Bruce is because, you know, Dick mourned his parents, but he moved he moved past that and, you know, built himself a life. Bruce, mm-hmm. his parents were killed and he's like, he was basically frozen in that moment. He's never moved past that. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, and I think it's nice and really gives a lot of nuance to their relationship to talk about, you know, how important Bruce himself is in helping, you know, Dick get, Dick get past that. Bruce didn't really have anyone and Dick had Bruce. And I think that that really makes their relationship extra, extra special. And definitely one of the reasons why it's probably the one I love to read about the most in comics. (laughs) 
Yeah, because, I mean, Bruce even acknowledges it. I think it's like an issue of Detective Comics right before No Man's Land or right in the middle of it or something. Because Bruce even tells Dick, he's like, he's like, you're better than I am. He's like, you know, you moved on. You made a life for yourself other than the mask. He's like, but, the, you know, Batman is basically all I am. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, even though Bruce, you know, hasn't recovered to the same extent that Dick did, I think they've, I think, they, you know, they've made it clear in the comics. And I think it's a lot of people, you know headcan that bruce would be in an even worse position if he had never taken on dick and then you know the sub the subsequent robin so even though he's not all the way healed he has healed some oh yeah because later on in gotham knights um and like when it, <laughs> later on in gotham knights when uh everyone's well basically him and tim aren't bruce and tim aren't speaking and alfred's with tim and basically Bruce is like in the mansion by himself. They show like he's even less Bruce Wayne because he's like sleeping in the costume and yeah, yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. And he's pretty much being the bat all the time. And you know that's just not healthy. <laughs> no, because I mean, yeah, that just reminds me of like when G- uh, Gene Paul Valley was uh, Batman. He that's basically what he did. He basically ate, slept, and was in the Batman costume like twenty four hours a day. Yeah, yeah, and I. Um, since we're talking about Gotham Knights and it's mentioned in that letter one that we were just talking about, you know, I would never, I would never go back. How Dick, you know, was hurt that, um, Bruce, you know, picked John, picked John Paul, um, yeah. which I mean, like, obviously I would, I'm like hurt for Dick. Um, it's like, that was a stupid move. why would you do that? Um, but I read a, a theory once that, uh, that they partially did that because, a lot of fans were saying, you know, Batman should be more intense. You know, he should be grittier and crazier and stuff. And so I, I read that, pe- that they were sort of, um, he was like, okay. So they gave them John Paul Valley as, you know, this is what you, you know, be careful what you wish for, uh, sort of thing that, you know, they sort of ramped Batman up to 11. And then everyone was like, oh, just kidding. I didn't want that. <laughs> yeah, I think they, they, they did do that. And, like, I don't know if that you know, and I don't know if that's true, but I like that theory that, they, you know, they did that and then brought Dick in. Not that because the people at DC didn't think Dick would be a good choice, but because they wanted to sort of tell people, you think this is what you want, but you don't. <laughs> yeah, like they, they I think they definitely did that to make news and get sales. Plus, it was in the middle. It was like 93 or something. So, yeah, that was like the big point in comics where everyone was like armor and guns and stuff so mm-hmm. that was part of that and oh. i think at that point it was towards the end of like dick in the t- they basically had dick, yeah like, it was he left titans yeah yeah i think he left the titans and was like didn't really have his own book it was mostly showing up in batman yeah yeah so like yeah towards the end of nightfall and then in the prodigal yeah they took him out of the, the titans book and put him in the bat book so then that's got him in prodigal and then he finally got his own more well, his mini series and then the book yeah that was funny oh and that was one thing that i liked since we were talking about the batman family and stuff uh that and i thought in this you know hugo strange story we're talking about i really enjoyed how when hugo right at the beginning hugo captures catwoman and he's all tell me your secrets about batman i'm gonna be batman and catwoman says oh have you cleared that with the acolyte and i just thought it was funny how because you know there's that kind of divide if, you know, in fans that, you know, oh, Batman is grim, dark, loner, or, you know, some of who lean more towards the Bat family and how they were kind of playing that out, that Hugo Strange is, you know, Batman is a loner. And Calvin says, oh, well, you might want to clear that with, you know, all the boys and girls that are uh, hanging out with him. And that really throws Hugo Strange for a loop. <laughs> oh, yeah, because even, like, Hugo, I think, says later on, and even the Joker's been like that from time to time. They're like, no, you're you're, you're such a strong guy, and these guys, and these 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 followers, these hangers on you have just like water you down and make you weaker. And then meanwhile, they probably, they make him a better person and make him stronger. But you know, all these villains think, Oh, they just make you weak. Exactly. Yeah. And I know I really, I really like that. I think it's a good, I think it's a pretty good message. And sometimes I think, you know, they're kind of throwing that out there at fans. Cause you know, there are fan factions. Uh, and some people that, I think there are some people that really do see that like, uh, Robin and all these bad girls and whatnot, you know, they do make him weak, but, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Am I completely biased opinion if they're wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, any final thoughts on Gotham Knights or Nightwing in general? Just that it was awesome and everyone should read it. <laughs> As I, get home. I don't know if any of it is on 
I mean, check if any of it's on Comixology. Can people get the back issues? Um, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know what they have digitized or not. Because yeah, I usually read uh, you know, hard copies myself. So <laughs> I mean, I'm not in, big in the digital either. But... Yeah, and I've got the I've got the hard copies. I take them from my dad's attic. Uh, but yeah, because I'm not actually sure if Gotham Knights has been trade paperbacked either. I know some of it has in this part of the Bruce Wayne, you know, murderer and fugitive. Mm-hmm. And I think Officer Down, but yeah. Oh, which actually brings me uh, to a, a different point. And I think it's too bad that Gotham Knights is not as well known. I mean, obviously, I suppose you can't expect it to be as well known as Batman or Detective. Uh, but, you know, it was really it was really good, particularly, you know, the first 45, 50 uh, issues. Is sometimes people forget that Bruce adopted Dick. And sometimes I think that... Other writers afterwards forget that Bruce adopted Dick, and I think it's because it didn't happen in the main titles, which is where Jason, because when he was adopted in the 80s, I think there was only Batman and Detective, and mm. and I think Tim, it was not like an adoption to do, uh, but I think there's like one issue where they kind of mention it and, you know, it happens, and I think that was in either Batman or Detective, and so then people forget that Dick was adopted. It makes me sad. I think that's a good point. If you're a big Dick Grayson fan, you should hunt down these issues in whatever form you can get them because, yeah, this is where the adoption officially took place. Yeah, and they do a good job in the first couple years afterwards of mentioning it, but then, you know, they kind of not, which, I mean, I make to a certain extent, I mean, you don't need to keep bringing it up every time, like, oh, hey, remember back in blah, 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 when Drew's adopted Dick. I mean, that's not, that's not natural. But uh, I think there's a one of the issues in uh, in Trinity uh, where they're at a they're at a party and someone's like to Tim, oh, you're the kid that you know Bruce just adopted, and where's his ward? And I'm like, ah, they're both adopted sons. And then in one of the when Dick is Batman and uh, what's his face, uh, Tommy Elliot is pretending to be is pretending to be Bruce, and he's hitting. Mm-hmm. Him. I have my ward and my adopted son. And I'm like, they're both your adopted sons. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if like like writers further down the line just forget it or if they you know if people just don't like certain story yeah arcs, and it could just... be partially that you know dick is pretty much the most famous ward ever um because <laughs> it's always like bruce wayne and his youthful ward dick grayson <laughs> yeah i just want to yell at writers and be like do your homework i know so you end up like a cheat sheet for this i mean it's not like even like you have to read the whole story it's just a bullet point right there it happens <laughs> Exactly. Of course, now I think it didn't happen. <laughs> <Sad>. <laughs> okay, I think we'd be able to peep one. <laughs> um, well, so. before we go, uh, did you want to uh, plug anything in the book, maybe? Oh, no, I don't think I've, I've got nothing else. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, we're go- we'll have to do this again. We'll have to figure out another storyline to talk about. and Because uh, I know you love Dick Grayson as much as I do. Thank you, Kristen. Um, if anyone else has any thoughts on these Gotham Knights issues or anything we discussed this week, or if you think that if there's a storyline that's just burning away inside you that you th- you want to you have to talk about, uh, you can email me um, worldsfinestpod at gmail dot com on Twitter. Uh, the world's finest podcast is at world's finest pod. And our before the bat is uh, before the bat at gmail.com, and our Twitter is at before the bat pod. Uh, hit me up. Like I said, share your thoughts on any of the this this episode, any previous episodes, or if you would like to discuss something Dick Grayson or Nightwing. Um, until next time, uh, Nightwing fans, keep hanging. <laughs>